الله أكبر الله أكبر الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So today inshallah I'm gonna share with you uh, my story of becoming a Muslim and uh, when I had this idea when I got this idea and I was thinking about doing it I actually realized that uh, around this time 13 years ago is when I uh, properly said my shahada. So it's been it's been a long time actually that I've been a Muslim now, uh, and I've told this story to some people who have asked about it before, but I've never really shared it like this. So here goes. Uh, so I'm gonna start from the very beginning. Uh, I come from a really small place in Estonia uh, called Vastselina, and at the time it had around maybe a thousand residents population has even decreased by now so a really small place where pretty much everyone knows everyone almost and uh, as a child uh, I don't remember how old I was exactly maybe 10 12 I really don't remember but what I do remember is that I started to kind of feel or believe or think that there is some higher power uh, something greater than us human beings, uh, some something or someone that controls this universe, this whole world. So I started to develop my belief in God somehow. Uh, and uh, probably because there's mostly, or there was, even, even today there is mostly like, if you want to look into any religion in Estonia, mostly find information about Christianity. And uh, partly because of that, uh, I, I first started learning more about Christianity. I remember also getting a, uh, a small, uh, like, prophet stories book from my grandfather, uh, who was actually the, uh, the only religious person in my family. My parents, uh, until this day, they, they are not uh, religious. Uh, and uh, and there was nobody really practicing any religion in my family except for my grandfather. So after reading that, uh, after reading that book and uh, reading maybe from some other sources also about Christianity, I started I started following Christianity. Uh, I was never christened, but. Uh, is that the word christened or baptized? I'm not even sure exactly. But uh, I never ritually became a Christian. That's what I want to say. I did consider myself a Christian, especially throughout my teenage years. I would, uh, I would go to church uh, whenever I could. Uh, not every weekend, not every Sunday. And I didn't normally go to the church uh, in the place where I lived in, because at that time, just being religious, being a believer in Estonia was kind of like, you didn't want to like really talk about it because because uh, of people's reaction. And uh, it just shows also how non-religious country Estonia is. Uh, and even as a Christian, uh, I was practicing, I was reading the prayers, I was reading the Bible regularly. I would go to the church, but I would never talk about it, maybe even with my parents, not so much, and not at all, for example, with my friends or my classmates at school. And uh, yeah, so I was kind of even practicing Christianity, kind of in a secret, didn't really talk about it too much. Uh, so my teenage years, I would say like three, four, maybe even a little bit more uh, years, I was I was a practicing Christian. 
And uh, at some point, uh, I started moving away from Christianity because I it was mostly the uh, the concept of uh, uh, of Jesus being the direct uh, Son of God and the whole concept of Trinity, which uh, kind of stopped making sense to me slowly. Uh, I would still go to church, but I would not consider myself a Christian anymore. Uh, it was a slow process, uh, but at uh, at some point I just felt that uh, okay, I'm I'm just believing in God. I don't have any religion. I don't I don't need any religion. Uh, I can just go on with uh, my life like this, just believing in one God, and that's enough. But uh, at that time, I was also open to more. Uh, more open to like other religions, other ideas, and uh, I started reading also about Islam. And another important thing is that when I was a Christian, at some point, I I wouldn't even talk to Muslims because of my religion, because I thought they were like so way off the truth or something. I then didn't even remember, but I remember that I. I completely avoided talking to Muslims, like online, I mean, because there weren't like any Muslims around around me anyways, uh, where I lived. But I had like a lot of online friends and uh, I was avoiding Muslims at some point. But then later I started becoming friends uh, again online with some Muslims. And it's not so much that I really, that they really called me to Islam, but they kind of just showed me just, you know, just by being normal, that they're also normal human beings, that I don't need to, like, avoid them. And uh, I also started to kind of see the the true image of Islam, uh, sometimes by, by what they told me, sometimes by their behavior, which was not the image that we in the West sometimes get from the media, from the TV, the news, etc., uh, where you only mostly hear about, or at least at that time, you heard about like you know some terrorist attacks that were associated with Muslims, etc. So you don't really get a good image just by you know watching those images and uh, reading those stories. Uh, so thanks to thanks to those friends, partly I became more open about Islam. I got more curious about it. Uh, I wanted to know more. So I decided to get the, get the copy of the, uh, of the translation of the meaning of the Qur'an in, in Estonian. It had just been published. It's not like, you know, the best translation. It was done by a non-Muslim. But it was a great thing for me to read as a non-Muslim, just to get a you know, better idea of what Islam is, what, uh, what the Qur'an is all about. And uh, the funny thing is actually that uh, when it was published, like it was sold like so fast. And my mom used uh, m my mom happened to be in the capital at the time, and I asked her if she could, you know, buy one for me. And it was like, you know, I remember when she came back home with that uh, with the copy of the Quran uh, translation, and just by handing it over to me, like you know, she was like, you know, kind of showed like it showed like she was kind of worried. You know, what was going to happen to my son now? Like, you know, is he going to become a Muslim? Uh, so what happened? I was, uh, I started to read it. I started to read it every day. And as I started going through that uh, translation, uh, I slowly but firmly started to, like, believe more and more that this is for me. And I started to feel that this, you know, this whole religion, Islam, it's actually for me. This is what I want to follow. And also this is what I have to and need to follow if I want to achieve uh, a good life in the afterlife. And the really nice thing for me when, uh, when reading this was that there were like so many things in it that I already believed in. So when some people think that, you know, becoming a Muslim uh, like converting from Christianity to, to Islam, for example, is such a huge, like, 
change of direction in your life. But but the truth is, like for me, it actually wasn't so so big of a you know change of direction, at least with my beliefs and my understanding of the world, because. You know the the whole concept of the the the, the hellfire and the the, the paradise, uh, the prophets and uh, and even like you know especially for me, the the concept of Jesus in Islam was so much more acceptable for me, so much you know easier to understand that he is just you know a really important prophet uh, and not not a son of God. So. It was really, it was really the reading the translation of the Quran that that was that gave me that push to uh, to accept Islam. As I was reading through the book, I started to kind of feel that I'm you know feel myself as a Muslim. I wasn't praying at the time. I hadn't said my shahada, but I was feeling. That you know, I was identifying myself as a Muslim already. So, at that time, like parallel to my religious like uh, change, uh, something else was going on that kind of slowed down my you know me becoming a Muslim. If I'm not mistaken, then I believe it was actually the very same day that I got the Quran that I started to talking. To one girl uh, online uh, from India and uh, we talked and we talked more and I fell in love and uh, when uh, I was 17 at the time so of course I couldn't travel legally like it would have been like a bit more difficult at the time but as soon as I turned 18 I uh, I went to meet her in India against the advice of all of my family, which of course I regret not, you know, listening to. It was a stupid decision, obviously, Islamically incorrect, but it's just what happened. I was crazy in love and uh, I did that. And of course, as unlawful it, as it was Islamically, uh, just traveling to another country to meet a girl. Um, I, uh, the, the funny thing is that I started, I became more religious there. And the reason is that while I was staying in the hotel, I discovered, uh, this Islamic TV channel called Peace TV, mostly famous for Zakir Naik. And I learned so much about Islam and my man, my, like my 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 faith grew a lot like and uh, i was even trying to like you know pray a little bit in some certain like incorrect way while i was there and and of course this thing with that girl didn't work out i came back uh that that relationship ended i believe 2009 march and it was 2009 april so 13 years ago again uh when I properly said my shahada, I had been basically saying my shahada already before because I was already praying uh, more properly now. Uh, so I don't really know exactly what would be the exact moment or the exact day when I became Muslim. Was it April 2009 when I actually said the shahada with the intention of accepting Islam or did the shahada that you know we say in the prayer already did that count as well I don't know but so uh, anyways that's when I that's how I became a Muslim uh, so I was uh, I was still in high school at the time and uh, I had one full year of high school left and that was quite interesting and not the easiest thing as a practicing Muslim uh, one thing because of the food uh, I used to normally eat in the school canteen but then I stopped that because there was like mostly everything was haram to eat there weren't like any like vegetarian choices really uh, at the time at least 
and uh, the prayers, of course, that was quite hard. But somehow I managed. I would sneak out. I mean, not sneak out. Like I would ask out. Like you know, raise my hand. And the way it, the way it was like, you know, can I go out? And uh, normal people would just you know go to the bathroom. But I would go and do my prayers somewhere uh, in the school building. I would sometimes go to the like the backup stairs, like the fire stairs, like around that area. There wasn't like too many people moving around there uh or some other like quiet place it was pretty hard but i always kept in mind that okay inshallah one day these things will become easier and i will just you know keep doing it patiently uh because if you really want to follow islam uh and you want to please allah surely allah will help you in that and uh, he will make a way for you for that. And at that time, I was also like, you know, more religious, probably like, or more, yeah, with a bigger, bigger iman, bigger faith than, uh, than uh, like ever. Uh, afterwards, like, you know, uh, it wasn't the same, the same feeling anymore, maybe. So I was like more eager to, you know, practice every, you know, Every little thing that I learned and uh, especially like do the prayers despite, you know, the difficulties that uh, that I faced doing that. And uh, also, uh, alhamdulillah, what made it easier for me was that my parents kind of took it pretty well. My, uh, me becoming a Muslim, there weren't really that big problems with that. Uh, they, they weren't happy about it for sure but uh but they slowly started accepting that um and also they didn't like really give me any big problems uh for my islam which was great because some uh some brothers and sisters unfortunately when they convert to islam uh the parents really can be extreme with them and you know even like give them the choice of like you know whether you become like stay a, a, a muslim uh and you move out of the house or you reject your Islam and, you know, you can live with us. Alhamdulillah, thankfully, I didn't deal with anything like that. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that's pretty much my story of becoming a Muslim. And uh, right after high school, 2010, I, uh, in the autumn, I, uh, I, moved, uh, uh, I moved to Saudi Arabia to study in the, uh, in the Islamic University of Medina. And... This is where I really felt like all that patience paid off, like all that patience of you know, of the or of those countless like prayers, like like trying to find a quiet place without you know like uh, anyone seeing me in the in the high school, and uh, dealing with other things that were like not so easy maybe some sometimes. It really paid off there because practicing Islam suddenly became so much easier, so much easier to find halal food. You had like mosques everywhere, masajid to pray in, uh, surrounded by by practicing brothers. Because at that time, like uh, in that small place where I lived in, in Estonia, like I was the only Muslim also. And uh, it was a while, like until I actually met uh, another Muslim when I visited the Islamic Center in Tallinn, which had just opened. Uh, but yeah, like there weren't, wasn't really much contact with like, at least like in person, I didn't have some Muslim friends online, but that was it. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my story, uh, of becoming a Muslim. Uh, when I think about it, I realize like how, how huge of a blessing it is sometimes, you know, with my daily life, I forget about it. But when I think back and look back at the, uh, the fact that like Allah chose me out of this, you know, like this small place, like in the corner of Estonia. And uh, in general, like in Estonia, there aren't many like convert Muslims, especially men are like just, just there's maybe just a, like a few dozens of men that have converted to Islam that have been blessed with, uh, with Islam. So when I think about it, like, it's such a huge blessing and 
something I'd like to be really, really grateful for. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, so that's it. Uh, uh, I hope um, I hope you uh, you like my story. Maybe there was something le learned from it. Uh, if not anything else, then at least something for like you know new Muslims that. You know, when you are going through some hard times in the beginning of your Islam, don't think that it has to be always like that. Things can get much easier. And uh, always try to do that which is pleasing to Allah. If you have something to choose from, like, you know, choose that which, which is more pleasing to Allah, which is more correct Islamically, and inshallah, Allah will help you in, in whatever you choose. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, may Allah bless you. And uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.